So the Minnesota Vikings are 4-0 after the first five games. But if we're looking ahead to the next five games, we got Vikings, Dolphins, Cardinals, Vikings, Vikings, Commanders, Vikings, Bills, and then Cowboys, Vikings. My opinion, maybe not the Bills game, but these are four very winnable games. I'm going to make this the pinned comment on today's video. I want you guys to get down in the comments and predict the Vikings record over the first or over the next five games games i'm gonna say four and one i got the vikings in the first 10 games going eight and two but i'll love to hear what you guys have to say go predict the vikings record over the next five games welcome to vikings now i am your host patrick seatman i'm hosting the four and one minnesota vikings that feels just great to say there was a hell of a game against the Chicago Bears yesterday where the Vikings ended up winning 29-22. It was a hell of a game back and forth. But before we get into it, I got some overreactions that I want to get to today. Shout out to Cameron Dantzler, man. He had the game winning in play and really the last couple of weeks. Cameron Dantzler, I think, has played his best football. If you're talking about his entire career, you know, the ups, the downs, you know, he's really been on the back or the backside of a lot of Vikings mishaps over the last couple of years. But yesterday, down the stretch, Bears are driving. He strips Amir Smith-Marset and secures the victory for our Minnesota Vikings. So before I get into it, shout out to you, Cameron Dancer. You've been through a lot the past couple of years. Great to see you step up and make a huge play. Now let's talk about some overreactions. The first one, the Kirk plus Jefferson connection is special. I think this is accurate. I think these two are getting on the same page faster than ever. And when you talk about, you know, special connections throughout the NFL, I feel like Kirk and Jefferson, it's not something you really think about. It's not a connection or a duo that you really throw into, like, the top five. But if you look at the quarterback wide receiver leaders since 2020, Cousins and Jefferson, by far number one. They got around a 200-yard league against our old boy, Stephon Diggs and Josh Allen. And then Mahomes and Kelsey coming in at third. Stafford and Cooper Cup, actually those numbers are just for the past two seasons. They are on a tear. So I think if you're talking about best duos, I think Cousins and Jefferson, they'll probably put up some, some of the biggest numbers. And then Stafford and Cup eventually will be right behind them. Then at five is Brady at Evans. But overall, Cousins and Jefferson, I think this connection is just going to continue to grow in Jefferson's third year. And the last two weeks, this dude's been on a tear, man. I mean, this dude... I think if you're talking best receivers in the NFL, he's got to be, his name's got to be in, you know, contention for that top title. 24 receptions, 301 yards at around 12 and a half yards per catch. No touchdowns besides that rushing touchdown he had against the New Orleans Saints, but he's been great. I think overall the Vikings offense lately, it's been picking it up. You know, yards per game, 374. Pass yards per game, 259. That's eighth in the NFL. That's a shout out to the Jefferson and Kirk Cousins connection. And then the points per game. 23 shout out to that too I think that's obviously you know you want to be in top 10 scoring I think this offense has that capability but sitting at 12 so far not bad third down percentage at 42.9 almost 43 percent seventh in the NFL that's huge but I think this Jefferson Cousins connection has directly relates to the clutch Kirk Cousins narrative that I've been pushing this is three straight games game winning drives for Kirk Cousins and you know who's targeted a lot on those last three game winning drives it was his guy, Justin Jefferson. I think this connection is building, and I think they're going to continue to grow it. And it's really led, you know, Kirk, he hasn't been the most clutch guy throughout his career. But these past two years, he had four game-winning drives last year, three game-winning drives already this year. I think when you have a safety net and just a really reliable receiver like Jefferson, I think it's a huge credit to that Jefferson-Cousins connection. Now, I want you guys to get down in the comments and answer this as well. Is Justin Jefferson the best receiver in the NFL right now? I know going into the year, a lot of the hype, Cooper Cup, Devontae Adams, a lot of people had Jefferson probably listed as the third or fourth best receiver with him, Tyreek Hill. But, I, you know, starting the NFL season, he's leading the league in receiving yards at 574. I think he's the best receiver in the NFL right now. Honestly, I can see a couple people going Cooper Cup, but I want you guys to get down in the comments. Type Y for yes or type N for no if Jefferson is the best receiver in the NFL. Second overreaction, Vikings can win the NFC North. This is accurate. I think the Vikings, if, with the huge loss that the Packers had yesterday against the New York Giants and the Vikings kind of sneaking out a couple close victories the last couple of weeks, I think it's very accurate. Look at the standings right now. Vikings 4-1, Packers 3-2, and 
Bears, two and three. Lions are sitting at a one and four. Honestly, I am shocked the Lions are one and four right now. I thought they would be competing for a playoff spot after the first couple weeks. But overall, this is going to be a two-team race, man. It's going to come down to the Vikings. It's going to come down to the Packers. You know, in the NFL, obviously parity plays a huge factor. But going into the year, I really thought it was going to be the Vikings and Packers. And now over the first five weeks, it's really going to look like that's going to be the case in the NFC North. I think the Vikings, I think that week, I believe it's a 17 game in Lambeau, second to last game of the season. That could be for the NFC North title. So stay tuned for that. But I want to know you guys' confidence level. With the Vikings being 4-1, and one, with the Packers being 3-1, and one, how do you feel about your conf or how is your confidence doing with the Vikings winning the NFC North? Scale it 1 to 100. I honestly will probably right now, if we're talking percentage-wise out of that, I'd give them an 80% chance. I think the Packers, I think they seriously have issues. And with the Vikings already having the tiebreaker over the Packers and beating them and being 3-0 and in the division, I do think the Vikings have a really strong chance to win the NFC North. Third quarter issues, we got to talk about them. I mean, if you guys haven't noticed, I'll go over some stats in a second. But the Vikings' third quarters have been a problem, and they were a problem yesterday. They were a huge reason why the Bears were able to get back in this football game, and they were a huge reason why the Saints were able to get back in the football game, why the Lions were able to get back in the football game. So I broke it down by quarter, the Vikings' scoring. This is pretty staggering. First quarter, 21-17, Vikings' advantage. Second quarter, 51-38, Vikings' advantage. But the third quarter, they're getting beat 33-6 to six in the third quarter scoring. And in the fourth quarter, they've been fantastic. 37-14, to 14, they're outscoring opponents. But if you look at the overall NFL ranks for the third quarter and the fourth quarter, third quarter, a minus 27 point differential. That's third worst in the entire NFL. And then the fourth quarter, being up 23 points, it's positive 23 point differential. That's fourth best in the NFL. So obviously you love that your team's finishing off games. You love the Vikings are coming out in the fourth quarter and really putting their fo foot on people's necks. But the third quarter, coming out of half, I do think this could be an issue moving forward. Something to monitor because it is a little shocking. If like You talk about halftime adjustments, and the Vikings have been very good with their halftime adjustments this year, especially in the fourth quarter. But the third quarter that you have the third worst point differential, a little concerning. But, hey, this channel's hot. Subs are coming in. The Vikings are on a three-game winning streak. Sub for Vikings dubs. This team, three weeks in a row. Win, win, win. Subscribe to the channel. Let's keep the Viking hype train going. This channel's doing good lately, and it's really credit to you guys. So if you guys haven't already, go down, hit that subscribe button. really helps more than you know. Now, I want to give a shout-out to the big boys, the dogs in the trenches, because they've been fantastic this year. This has honestly been the first time in probably five years I've been confident about this Vikings offensive line. So shout out to them. I have some O-line rankings I want to deep dive into you guys right now. Deep dive with you guys right now. ESPN has the Vikings at the 14th best in pass protection and the fourth in run blocking. So that's a pretty, you know, that's top 10 or that's top five in run blocking, top 15 in pass protection. Shout out to the O-line. PFF, sixth in pass block win rate and seventh in run block win rate. And the overall takeaway I have with this offensive line throughout the year so far is Chris, Chris Cupper, the Vikings offensive line coach. We talk about Garrett Bradbury's deficiencies throughout the offseason. You know, he's undersized. He's not the biggest center. He can't really go against those big nose tackles as well as other centers. I thought Chris Cupper so far, he's been scheming around Chris, Garrett Bradbury's deficiencies, and Garrett Bradbury's had a really solid year. But I think overall the main guy we got to look towards is Christian Darisol. I mean, the second, the second year left tackle out of Virginia Tech, he's ranked the third best tackle per PFF so far, and I think he's going to be a franchise tack, franchise left tackle for many years to come. I said he was the best tackle since Phil Lodeholt a couple videos ago, but for the first time in a while, I really do feel like the Vikings have a franchise left tackle. He has given up zero pressures over the last two weeks. Just shout out to him, man. I mean, you're protecting Kirk Cousins' blindside, and Kirk, we know, not the most mobile quarterback. And Darisol, he's been holding it down. So really credit to him. He's been the brightest spot on this Vikings roster. He's taken the biggest leap, and the Pro Bowl All-Pro season is coming. If you guys haven't already, follow me on Twitter. I love chopping it up with you guys, talking Minnesota Vikings football, just really talking about anything. Give me the, we talk about the Minnesota Vikings news, Minnesota Vikings rumors. I'm talking about it all the time on Twitter. Love hearing from you guys. There's my handle right there. If you plug that in on Twitter, at Pat Seatman NFL, give me a follow. I'll throw it in the description. Throw it in the comments of today's videos. Give me a follow. I'll follow you right back. Thank you guys so much for watching. Go Vikes.